Welcome back. Now, the death of Bob Colimo has once again brought to the fore the cancer problem in the country. And it continues to cause grief globally and in Kenya as well, leaving death and poverty in its trail. It's the third largest uh, or third leading cause of death in Kenya, just behind infectious diseases and cardiovascular ailments. There were 47,000 new cases of cancer in the country in 2018, according to the World Health Organization. Most of these new cases recorded among women. The most frequent cancer cases are breast cancer, cervical cancer, esophagus, and, and then prostate cancer. As we said earlier, the death of Bob Kolima once again lifts the lead on the cancer menace in Kenya. He was misdiagnosed initially and spoke uh, of how privileged he was to afford treatment. But what about the majority of Kenyans? In Parliament, there's a proposal to make cancer screening part of primary health care. And that again speaks to the problem of early detection and misdiagnosis. In studio now, Sam MP, James Ical, uh, member of parliament, member of the health committee uh, as well, former director of medical services, former uh, a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Health, and of course, is also a doctor by profession. And we have Dr. Alex Muturi, who <laughs> is uh, a surgeon. We thank you all for making time. Uh, for us uh, tonight for this uh, very, very timely discussion. First, it should be such a noble thing, the proposal to make, and you were there before, yes. uh, 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 the committee hearing today, uh, to make cancer screening part of primary health care. But first, how practical it, is it, and what would it take to make this happen? And how important is it for that topic? I'll start with him, Dr. Muturi. Um, I, I think it's always commendable when the political leadership, whether it's in the legislature or the exec executive, want to take the lead in making um, changes in healthcare that affect very, very many people. Cancer care is, cancer in this country is where we were in the 1980s with HIV, where we were saying everyone is either infected mm -hmm. or affected. It's mm -hmm. the same situation with cancer care right now. Mm -hmm. But- Not even now, it started a while. A while back, <laughs> yeah. a while back. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's coming to the fore because number one of the prominent people, some of whom are involved, or the, the the catastrophic expenditure uh, involved mm. in, in taking care of cancer mm. uh, in the recent days. Mm. But in terms of uh, the proposal by parliament to make um, cancer care, or rather cancer screening, uh, a primary health issue, we 100% support this as mm. fraternity of doctors. But that's, that has cost implications in it. How possible is that for us? Well, because if we are talking about cancer, we need a comprehensive program. Mm -hmm. Uh, when you get to the to the high end when you need expensive treatment you have actually lost the case so getting cancer early is important and when you are talking of a primary health care mm. you are talking of community health workers you are talking of people in the in the uh, level two level three facilities it is practical it is possible to have screening at that level there including, are including there are that will, they could equipment that, that will, would need include personnel. It will include people who examine. Mm -hmm. It will need very simple equipment and uh, basically the knowledge that what is this that I'm seeing. So there are simple, there are simple uh, uh, things that can be done. Mm -hmm. For example, mm -hmm. let's take cancer of the cervix, which is the second yeah. uh, in, in women, the second biggest killer in women. Yes. There's a simple screening just examining uh, the woman with just light and sometimes you use what we call Lugol's iodine or some other things to just look. There is what we call a pap smear which you can do once every year. Mm -hmm. That can be done in a health center or a dispensary and it will tell you that this is a possible case and if you pick it at that point then it will be easy to treat. Let me say something that probably is, is, is even cancer of the colon, which is, is common. It may start as a simple thing of seeing blood stained in the stool. We don't feel any pain. You feel it once mm -hmm. in a while. Mm -hmm. Now, if we, we, people like that are told that at your age, if you see there is blood stained, it is better to, 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 to be examined. You can then be sent further to be seen. Look at, if you, if you say take the cancer of the skin, not very common, but it has occurs. And you may have something like a pimple on the face. And if nobody thinks about it, it will grow to be a cancer. And by the time now you want to treat it, you can't. If you can just say that, less that looks suspicious to me, you may need to go ahead 
and we seen it will be seen very early but no, no, not not only that a lot of cancers also have to do with our lifestyle let's say cancer of the lungs if you are smoking heavily you have a very high chance of getting cancer mm. so that is something that can be tackled at the primary health they're being taught that these are things you should do even being obese these are things so when you start training people at the primary health care on that so one is their lifestyle two is the screening and it, it how, can, how would now, you, how let's do you say, imagine this screening to be done let's, let's like say, a normal person going for a checkup in what do we what do we do and actually even as far back as 2000 and 2003 i think we have i don't know what has happened the document should be still there mm. we were looking at a program of looking at cancer across so that when you go to a health center mm -hmm. we should put in our guidelines the things that if you see a person with at a health center level you will you must like screen them for yeah screen them for that mm. like let's say cancer of the breast just examination of the breast you feel a lump and it normally starts as a small lump which is painless which even the patient themselves can feel and they ignore so it should have been there actually you're saying that document Ye yes so the document they talked about is in yeah, 2003 it, yeah it should yes. it should be there but wh wh I, why okay why is it not there and and i'm just trying okay it's it's very noble if this happens definitely yeah. but how possible is it um i'm talking I, about resources and the costs that will come with this i i, I support dr nikal's uh, position that the strategies and the the vision and all that about cancer screening screening yeah have existed in the ministry of health for yeah. the longest time it's just a question of implementation, implementation. because it has a huge budget allocation That's and the it problem, has a time it? factor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the time factor comes in when you consider that you need to train people but i wanted to take off at a slightly different angle mm -hmm. on this issue of public health care there's been a lot of hype recently mm -hmm. uh, on uh, we need to uh, support more of promotive and preventive as opposed to curative. I want to disabuse the notion that that can happen just by talking about it. Because right now what is happening, mm. the bulk of the budget meant to, for that exercise mm -hmm. is being spent in hotels where people talk endlessly, plan endlessly, in the name of awareness. and nothing is happening. Uh -huh. Our proposal as KMPDU is to educate, educate, educate. And who are we educating? First of all, we have to educate the adults who are already working, who are already in gainful employment, mm -hmm. to be aware of their bodies. So that when you notice anything that is changing from what you're used to as normal, then you're able to alert your health provider. But more importantly, mm -hmm. our suggestion as a doctor's union has always been, we must integrate this preventive promotive business with primary school education and high school education. Because healthcare awareness has to start there. Mm -hmm. We cannot be trying to force healthcare awareness to people essentially who have done, we are done with schooling when it should have been an integral part of the education. You and I growing up when we went to primary school, we were taught about balanced diet, how to even cook that food that is balanced diet so that it's healthy to our bodies. Yeah. In primary school, yeah. it's not happening now. So the conversation has to go back to the, to the grassroots. And the grassroots in our, in our, in our idea is to educate the primary school children and the high school children about healthcare awareness. That's okay. Honorable you are concerned very much whether it is possible. It is possible. Saying we have to put money in these things. At even the, it is lower cost at the lower level. I can tell you, way back, I think 2005, we already actually were buying some equipment mm. for actually examining the women, and we are even putting simple treatment. You uh, are the... I was the director, the, medical the, medical the director of medical services. So yeah. I, I still believe that in some places you can go and find those things that we are putting where you could just look, do simple treatment, and even advise further. And the training of people, again, uh, all people must be trained. School children, the public, even the health workers will need some training, even in that detec detection, community health workers. And as you go, it's a continuum up to the time when you are doing those uh, complex surgeries, even there it will need training. Okay. And actually the bill we were looking at is actually coming, another aspect of it is training even the health workers in, 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 in. Are you, in, okay. Yeah. Do you have any modalities of how this probably should be financed? You, you, I mean, both of you are talking about how difficult it is in terms of budgetary uh, allocations, okay? 
I'm not saying you must, you, know, you are the ones to give that or to come up with that uh, uh, proposal how it should be financed, but may, in your line of work and in your experience, how should you finance this, for example? Um, one of the things that has been floated around as a financing model for UHC is increasing the money allocated to NHF, uh, either through uh, budgetary allocation mm. or some grants to just plug the gap between what NHF is collecting mm -hmm. and what is enough to be able to offer that quality of care. Um, we made a proposal that um, it's probably not a very politically attractive one, mm -hmm. but the, we say that the government has to make a deliberate, um, a deliberate attempt to spend on healthcare. And we have to see that figure in the budget. Right now, there's about 60 billion shillings that goes to the Ministry of Health. Um, there has been endless debates as to whether that kind of amount should be going there or yeah. not. But what we are looking at as KMPDU is what would it cost? What would this cost for Hussein Mohammed to go to a health center today and get treated for uh, diabetes, hypertension, and the like, or get screened for cancer for that matter? And then factor the average, the average of that cost for everyone in this country into the national budget. And then say, okay, this is the amount. Unfortunately, we are only able to raise this much. So that, that we know, huge, no, so that yeah. we know yeah. what the gap is. Yeah. So that when we are appealing for help, especially from donors and the other people who support our healthcare initiatives, we are appealing for help to plug the gap. Right now what is happening, there is a lot of money, people have complained, that mm. goes, mm. comes into form of donor support. Mm. Mm. That at the end of the day, people are wondering, with that kind of money that was poured into our health system, how come there is no meaningful change in the way uh, uh, quality health care is offered in this country? So we suggested that it needs to be a tax funded, yeah, health care workers driven uh, public uh, kind of health care uh, system. Mm. And that will kill two birds with one stone. Once that is guaranteed, that there is funding, for people walking in and getting their care, even if they have to pay a small token for sustenance, you will get um, you will get training captured in the same in the same uh, kind of arrangement. Yeah. Because you are going to have very many people seeking care. So what will happen? Kenyatta National Hospital, MTRH, KU will not be enough as training grounds. We are going to start asking Nyeri to train, but Nyeri cannot do that with the kind of patient volume they have. They need bigger volumes, and more importantly. They need the expenditure for those patients in, the, in terms of the supply, in terms mm, of the drugs, mm, in terms of mm. the, the, the services in theater, to be catered for by, by someone other than the patient. Right now, NHF is not enough. Out-of-pocket payments are not enough. The only thing is a tax-funded uh, program that is probably supplemented by donate. Clearly, it's not enough. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I mean, let's, let's talk to first the issue of how, exp I mean, we all know how expensive it is yes. uh, to treat cancer. Beyond reach, actually, to put it mildly, yeah. beyond reach yeah. for the yeah. average Kenyan. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what can be done otherwise? You're giving us uh, ideas on how this can be done. I mean, it is argued, for example, we have been successful mm -hmm. somewhat in fighting malaria, uh, managing HIV, mostly through donor funds. I don't know if the exactly. same can mm -hmm. be done with cancer or there's no... Yeah. Let's go on health funding. First of all, the government has to put money aside it. A budget declaration way back in 2000-2001, we said we'll do 15%. Right now we are doing about 6% at the national government and we don't know, the county government are doing about 20 or so. Mm -hmm. So eventually even if put that, it's not. So one, put that money there. Two, we have insurance. You can actually have two insurance. You can have the National Social Health Insurance. And I believe even the money we have there now, we are not using it uh, properly. The overheads are too high. That will be another money you will have. Then there will be private insurance. So we cannot, we will not run away from it. We can get donor funding, yes, but we must start with this. Now, malaria and HIV, I'll tell you how it happened. It was a big global fund support. So that is where the money came from. So again, we may hope that uh, the, the, the donors will help us with the money. Mm. But I think we must first of all put our money. We'll get a long way and then get our priorities right. That so as I said, 
go for uh, 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 public awareness. Go for early detection and early treatment. Then you can have uh, some centers, not very many centers, that do expensive, sophisticated treatment. Because if you, if you, if you, if you put too much emphasis on that, what happens? You will see more the money. Since as far as 2005, mm. I actually said that non-communicable diseases, heart diseases, diabetes, and cancer will come and take over our finances if you are not careful. Sorry, that we that is happening. It's, it's happening. happening. Yeah. Yeah. And now it is affecting, very interesting, it is affecting people infection, who infection are very diseases. important. Mm -hmm. And you know what's going to happen? If you're not careful, money is going to move to the expensive, expensive treatment. Because the people who are affected are the people who control who fat, including even us, members of parliament. So there's need for the deliberate policy to have a comprehensive cancer care so that we don't have to take people to India. There may be no real advantage among the people who are going to India. Mm -hmm. you, you may look... Yeah, and, uh, that's a question many uh, people are asking. Are there, yeah? we, have, we have tried to look at it. Yeah. Think yourself, the people who have gone, how many came back... With positive stories. And, and, uh, and still alive. So... What, what you're trying to say is that there's no difference? There is a, uh, there is a, a small difference that I don't think is well, worth the I money. I mean, I've, I've, I've uh, personally I've talked to people, I've, I mean, engaged people who've gone to India, who are still in India, and they talk uh, their success stories. I'm not saying, I mean, this is, this is a disease, their success and I mean, sometimes not successful stories, but they talk of how cheap it is to get treated in India, how easy it is to access medication in India, and they... Everybody's talking about that being, and not, not necessarily okay. India, I mean, plus other countries. Other countries. But talking about how easy it is for them there than back home. Because, one, they have trained enough people so that they have enough staff to look at it. Mm -hmm. Two, they are in their pharmaceutical industry, they have actually moved. India uses a lot of generics. So we may have to go even into manufacturing. There are countries that actually even negotiate with the manufacturers at government level so that the prices of drugs come down. That is what we did with HIV. Mm -hmm. 2003, 2004, HIV was 70,000 shillings a month. Yes. So when the, 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 the paper came and the Clinton came, there was a big problem. They were giving us money, but they were still buying very expensive drugs. Then we said, no, let's go for good generics that can be cheaper. Uh, Brazil at that time went for manufacturing, India went for manufacturing, and we're still putting from there. So you need, it's not simple, you need an, a, an expansive program, looking at even the availability of drugs. You need to even have a national drug list saying these are the drugs that we will use. Not a situation where anybody, new drug comes and it is actually on the prescription. And if a drug is required, like in cancer, it is very expensive, and we think at a nation we need it, we can have international negotiations. There are laws, international laws, mm. like uh, TRIPS, uh, what they call TRIPS like flexibilities, where you can even manufacture uh, uh, on license. You can have compulsory licensing, you can have negotiated licensing. So, a big national program looking at funding, looking at human resource training, and, and, and looking at even availability of, of, of drugs. Okay. Are we taking this thing seriously? I'll, I'll read a few uh, SMSs and tweets right now. One is from the MP for GEM, Honorable Odisha Othiambo, who says, this is an important conversation that we need to have as a country. What happens to medical equipment that have expired in hospitals? Uh, who monitors their radioactive levels to limit exposure? Uh, who monitors medical equipment donated to this country? How safe are they? Who monitors the food imports that enter the country? Well, we have a radiation board with utmost capability. They, like, they lack capacity in terms of <coughs> manpower and resources to ensure Kenyans are not exposed to higher radioactive rays. We have so many quacks operating X-ray machines without an active medical audit. I think that, that actually goes to you as a, <laughs> a trustee of it's a, it's a, uh, KMPD. Yeah. It's a big issue, Hussein, because you remember the medical, um, the, the, the mess uh, scheme of leasing medical equipment. We had our input way before even the whole uh, MES concept was. Yeah. It actually came from the Musimi Task Force of 2012. 
the whole mess, uh, uh, idea. But the implementation or the cascade into the counties happened minus the input of the healthcare workers. And that's why it's a mess. I think I should be able to say that. What we were saying before the equipment was actually brought into this country is that listen to the professionals. Listen to the people through the professional associations. Surgical Society of Kenya put out um, uh, uh, a memo to, to, to Minister of Health at that time cautioning against uh, the lopsided prioritization of getting very expensive equipment when you don't have the ground ready for mm. utilization of the equipment. And mm. what does the ground readiness mean? Ground readiness means that you have the, the, the geologist, like you're saying, to operate the CT scan machine or to report the, the images from the CT scan machine. You have the other support staff. And more importantly, you have a budget for the continuous supplies that are needed to keep the equipment running. As it is right now, that's not happening. So it's bound to happen that most of these equipment that were bought very expensively yeah. will be lying idle. He actually goes ahead to say, ultimately we need to invest in a nuclear research reactor for medical research and treatment of cancer and production of isotopes which are useful. Now let me respond to yeah. what is what is used to come up to. True, when you are going to that level of treatment, particularly radiation, treat, uh, radiotherapy, x-rays, then you are, uh, you are actually using substances that emit radiation which are, can actually be harmful to people. As it is now, we have a radiation protection board which should actually be looking at this. But if we are going to go into more complex things like, like uh, nuclear energy, mm. then obviously we are going to need a nuclear uh, regulatory authority. In fact, there's a bill in parliament which has passed the second stage mm -hmm. that is going to deal with that. But he has a point that if you are going into that high level, uh, like if you are talking a, a, a PET, PET scan, yeah. then you are talking about radiation. Yeah. But I don't think that is a big problem. That we can do. What we should look at, can our people access these things to help them? Or can we treat them early so that they don't even need these things? Okay. I'll, 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 and I'll come to, to uh, you'll also respond. I'll read a few more tweets very quickly. Serena uh, H. Son, who says, uh, to comment on the obsession of Kenyans with the hoax of cancer cures by Miti Shamba, the best way to combat cancer is early screening, healthy eating, weight control, and common sense. We in Europe uh, do anything to eat veggies, vegetables, okay? Uh, we have uh, somebody here who says, yeah. Jacob Abere Mat Matlala says, cancer screening management and treatment as panelists puts, okay. As the panelists put it, okay, need to be moved to primary care clusters. Community health workers as a software need to be included uh, as they have been doing on family planning mm -hmm. and HIV. And Marcus Origa says running a credible health facility needs a lot of money, but with a selfish middle class unwilling to spend and a government too busy investing uh, in corruption, public health hospitals will forever remain death traps uh, for the poor. And of course, this has been talked about severally, the poor. Finally, rain. At Asamo on Twitter says, there's money wasted through corruption. Over 900 billion shillings is lost each year from our budget. That is enough to improve our healthcare infrastructure. And this, I guess, goes back. And I, I want I, you to I, respond I, to that finally about I, I political probably, yeah. goodwill. Because you've been in all. You've been a, you know, a parliamentarian. Mm -hmm. You've been in government. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell us about the disconnect. But let's talk about 70 to 80 percent of cancer cases actually diagnosed in the late uh, Stage. stages. Bob Collimo's case, for example, uh, was initially misdiagnosed, okay? And so have other hundreds of Kenyans have gone through such problems. Uh, I mean, what is the reason for this? And how do we stem the misdiagnosis problem? And of course, the issue of early detection. How prepared are we for that? And how important is it, yeah? Um, yes, there have been cases of misdiagnosis, which is a terribly regrettable situation. But uh, I want because to time is always of essence. It's always of the essence. Yeah. But one of the contributing factors to misdiagnosis is, I have to say this, is the quality of the care provider who first sees you. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the time, as a member of public, you have no control over that. So that time, sometimes you are see, being seen by uh, someone who is not qualified or who is not fully qualified. We can address the not fully qualified by training the issue of not qualified can only be addressed through the, the legal mechanisms. Mm -hmm. But Hussein, allow me to say this. In terms of what is the solution to curbing this menace, the number one thing, it has to be political. And the, what I mean by political is our political leadership 
has to think of the solution to this problem without selfish business interests. Because that is what so that, is, uh, what do you mean so by that? So that, that as a political leader who is drafting a legislation, yeah. or who is making sure that a particular legislation is implemented, does not look at what some of the things that are being proposed in terms of business opportunities for himself or his friends. The moment that is removed, then public good prevails. Right now what is happening, public good is made to appear to be there. And yet it's selfish political interest and selfish business interests that are being pushed. One of the things that has made us come to this conclusion is because whenever you fight very hard to push a public good legislation through parliament, mm. it is either going to be shelved or it's going to be reintroduced and passed with interests. With interests. With interest. And it's self evident. It doesn't require any justification. It's just there for all to see. Colin Yuka, will you agree with that? Yes. This, these are things we have to fight. Sometimes you actually look at legislations and you look at this legislation seems to be actually having political interest. Actually, we fight it. So if you listen to, to, to debate in parliament, and normally people look at the public debate that, that occurs in second stage reading. When you really want to understand what is going to happen, you look at the, 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 the committee of the whole house. When people go and do tests, mm. then you can find. Well, I wouldn't say that always it is happening, all bills are like that. But sometimes you actually get a bill where there's a big fight because there are interests. Uh, but you, 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 we, we started talking about uh, screening. I think I don't want to move away from this and misdiagnosis. Yes, because it's a big problem. Now, yeah. misdiagnosis, I said it will start with training, good training of health workers. Whether they are uh, you're starting with uh, community health workers, there are sometimes they can pick cancer, sometimes there are telltale <coughs> signs of cancers. If they are trained enough, they will know it. If when you go to say the clinical officers and the nurses, they have to be trained. Even the doctors themselves have to be trained. If you train generally and you, 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 you don't now focus, we, we will sometimes now have guidelines, they're called algorithms, mm. that you say, if you see this, you, you look for this. this. Yeah. So now these are, if we go into a proper program, we will then have those uh, guidelines that are even available at the health centers. Are we even investing in this? That's the issue. It is cheap, Hussein. It's not difficult. I, I can might. tell you, you know what I'm telling you? Mm. Because how did we deal with HIV AIDS? It looks so complex. Yeah. How did we deal with malaria? We reduced the rate from malaria from 60% to less than 30% within two years. Why is it so difficult to deal with this then? Well, I... Th that's why I said, I'll, 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 I'll try and ask you, because you've been a permanent secretary, yes. you've been director of medical services, yes. now you're a member of parliament, parliament. sitting in the health mm -hmm. committee. Where's mm -hmm. the disconnect? What but, is the problem? But the, the disconnect is focus. Let me tell you in this country, I, I must say this, when I was director of medical services and, and permanent secretary, I felt, I don't know whether these people in government feel now, I had the freedom, I made decisions, they were technical. I can tell you, for those eight years, Director of Medical Services and the PS, I never, I don't even remember a single call from State House or same way telling me what to do. I made decisions and we sat with my officers and we said this is what we are going to do. We, we even put guidelines, even referral systems, we put them down. So I think what we need what was the, I mean, okay, you're, you're saying you made decisions. Mm -hmm. Did you make any key ones in as far as Cancer and in fact, it is 2005 yeah. when we actually set up the Department for Non-Communicable Diseases. And we actually said, unless this is done, okay. we're going to have a problem. And even by that time, I think we had put in a national cancer program that was suggested. As far as that, International uh, Atomic uh, Energy Agency mm. even had actually started working with us if we could improve and train our people, and they were training some people. So what do you think, okay, in your, in your years of service, mm. uh, what was the problem? What do you think was the problem? The pro who would you blame, really? Who would you put the blame on? Mm. No, not necessarily blaming us for the problem of cancer is concerned, no, it's what but the issue is, where, where, what, what, where what, do you think what? was the biggest problem? Was it in parliament? Was it in the executive implementation? Where was the problem? Now, uh, our time, 
I really felt that whenever we, we wanted to do something as technical people, mm. we, we did it. And I didn't feel, I didn't feel this, this level of, uh, of, uh, of uh, people self-interest that I see. But I guess if you yourself are not in it, but probably you don't see it. But what I'm now not seeing is the focus on public good. In parliament, that's what you're saying right oh, across, now. Across. 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 That is, not, that is what you're not seeing. That's what I'm not seeing. In terms of political... Uh, uh, actually, you call it political. And let me tell you, I think there's, a, there's, a, okay. lot, there's a lot of talking of, of meaning well for the people. But, but actually, I don't see it. And remember, if there is a lot of polit uh, politicking, yeah. if the executive is, is not protected from that, it works. I'm not so sure we're going on a higher level whether this issue that we have ministers who are not political as helped us. I think they actually more amenable to executive manipulation than ministers that were, oh, politi who were political. Okay. Uh, Usain, allow me to respond partly to Dr. Nikal, Nikal mm. because in support yeah. to, to what he's saying. Because there has been this talk among the Kenyans on social media, among politicians, that we need to build cancer centers. I think that's a very dangerous way of thinking because mm. it assumes non-existence mm. of cancer centers. I want to tell you here without fear of contradiction mm. that every level four hospital in this country mm -hmm. is a cancer center because it has a surgeon, it has an obstetrician gynecologist, it has a pediatrician, it has a physician. Some of them have radiologists, some of them have pathologists and that is the skill set yeah. that you need to be able to make a diagnosis and formulate a treatment plan for cancer. And the, the, the element of care that you're not able to provide at that level is then what you would refer to the radiation oncologist, the medical oncologist, the surgical oncologist, like some of us who have interest in that area. You, you, you do not want brick and mortar structures. I think we have enough of that. Mm. What we want is the missing ingredient. In this case, skills. It takes long to train, yeah. it's expensive to train, yeah. but we must hear deliberate effort from government. Towards that. We are talking about national government here, towards that. Because everyone keeps talking about the, 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 the constitution and the way it delegates, or rather it allocates the role of training to the national government. But this role of training has been hazy, it has been very badly misunderstood. We want the people who are involved to seriously come back and look at what the intention was. The intention was to look at the output of training as a national resource. Okay. Right now it's not happening. The counties are complaining because they are releasing their doctors to go and train and they have to continue paying their salaries. The ministry is only paying the fees. What we are saying as the doctor's fraternity, it's about time the national government took up the whole role, okay. whereby they train by paying the fees. They pay the, the salaries because when you're on a training position, you're working and any other support that is needed to come up with someone who is fully competent. Right. And before I finish on that point, we keep imagining a situation that we'll have a country that is populated by so-called cancer experts. Again, I want to put it to you that all the doctors who are graduating from fifth year or sixth year of training, yeah. they are cancer specialists. Mm. Why do I say that? Mm. Because in their basic training, by the time you are deemed enough or rather having trained enough to graduate, you have gone through what it takes to make a diagnosis of any cancer mm. in terms of how you ask questions, how you examine, mm. how you order for basic tests. The only thing we need to do now, because mm. we have this army mm. of ready to work um, cancer specialists, mm. is to deploy them. That is not happening. They are held up in this town looking for how to feed their families instead of being, work, being posted to work in Wajir, to work in Garissa, because people keep saying that we have the will to absorb them, but we don't have the budget. Okay. We have the budget. The only thing we are having in this country is lopsided prioritization of where that money goes. We need the money to be used to pay the doctors, not to fund trips that have no meaning. In of the course, and, 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 and so let me just say one thing small. If you wait for a specialist to diagnose your cancer, you are done. Your cancer should be picked much earlier by the first primary health cancer. Well, that info, you're still emphasizing the point of training. Yeah, yeah, but of course, the equipment is also important here. Yeah. I, I, I will address the equipment. Yeah. If you Let's take me. a look at, finally, uh, this, some of the uh, feedback again. I'll, I'll sample a few. Uh, this is what you're saying on uh, 
Okay, our SMS number double two four double two. Uh, somebody says we need a cancer run race like the heart run and diabetes run to boost cancer patients financially. Okay, that's, that's interesting. Uh, Calvin Chitwa, in fact, I would challenge that person to start that. I will all join in. Absolutely. Calvin Chitwa in Eldred. As a family, we have lost five family members to cancer. We're sorry about to hear that, uh, Calvin. Treatment is extremely expensive, and at the end, families are left drained financially. No doubt about that. Doctors and private hospitals should be fair with charges for treatment. It is high time the MPs came up with clear laws to help reduce the cost of treating cancer in Kenya. People are suffering. Honorable Nyekal, again, that's a challenge to mm -hmm. all of you mm -hmm. and the issue of subsidizing cancer treatment. James Ogutu in Migori, the government should put more effort in administering cancer menace. It's possible if enough money was allocated for it, HIV and AIDS was tackled mm -hmm. from all corners and we saw success. Okay, uh, your tweets now, again, a sample. Uh, Isaac would say the cost of treating cancer remains way above the reach of most households in Kenya. GOK should ensure NHIF covers full cancer treatment. And then we have um, Kibet Kigan. We also have a challenge ourselves. People don't go for health checkups until they are unwell. This is why many cancer cases are realized in the late stages. We need to mobilize the public to, for, to go for cancer uh, screening regularly. And uh, Mark Orwa says we need serious mechanisms in the country that can transform the whole approach in the cancer fight. Funds should not be the problem. The desire should be. Again, it's what, uh, what you were talking about, Dr. Muturi. Finally, Ibrahim Mohammed in Majiri and HIV is not the solution for healthcare. Simply when you enroll as private, a private contributor, you assign specific hospitals within your locality and with limited services. If one becomes sick elsewhere, he or she is referred to the hospital. The government should buy necessary equipments to hospitals and train specialists and uh, doctors. Your final comments on this. And how, how or where should Kenyans get hope from? I'll start with you. Yeah, I think we, sh we should have hope. Uh, first of all, we, through legislation, we really must start look at it uh, in the Health Act, in the amendments that are coming, and also this implementation of universal health cover. But I must say that we must start with awareness. We must train our people so that they, it can be picked early. And then we must fund the health care in this country. We must put money in health. And eventually, we must have a program so that the simple cancer is picked early and simpler treatment is given and just have a, some few centers yeah. that now go for expensive, uh, high-level treatment. So that we may even have people come from other countries here. If you are trying to put resources everywhere in small bits, small bits, small mm. bits, mm. you will not get there. Okay. The, the, be the best and the most successful cancer uh, prevention, cancer diagnosis, and cancer treatment strategy is the one that is public and tax funded. Israel, uh, the NHS in Britain have are clear examples that that works. And we, in terms of the human resource, we have adequate numbers of doctors. We just need to deploy them and just top up the required training that is needed. Because they are not at zero, they are at somewhere, yeah. they just need to be topped up to be able to then adequately cover the issue. And finally, all Kenyans, you yourself, Hussein Mohammed, myself as Dr. Muturi, Dr. Nikal, the political leadership in this country, ordinary Kenyans, we all have to come back to our senses and realize that cancer care or health care for that matter is each and everyone's responsibility. We cannot afford to continue delegating our well-being to a select few who are the healthcare providers. Thank All right. Uh, I just have to ask this. You can respond to you very briefly. <laughs> Brian uh, at Lusigi says, please ask on the dangers of day-to-day -day microwaving on our daily foods. Uh, there's been a fallacy that microwave is associated with cancer. Yeah. I want to challenge him that microwave does not emit any more radiation than the sun does. So he, the, only way, safe, yeah. the only way for him, if I can advise him, to protect himself from cancer is not to be born, which is not possible. <laughs> At least tell him not to smoke, not to drink. Finally, allow me to <laughs> respond yeah, to, yeah, yeah. to the gentleman from Eldon, okay. who lost family, five family yeah, members yeah. To, to cancer. I sympathize and I empathize with him. But the, the way to address the issue, because we can't do anything about the loss that has already happened. It's sad, it's painful, yeah, yeah. but we can learn from it. And it's from what Dr. Nikal was talking about. We have what we call uh, population-based screening. It's very expensive, we can't afford it. It's happening in countries where 
it, the, the entire country is covered by the public health system. Yeah. It's, it can be done, but we don't have the money right now. Okay. But we can have what is called high risk or targeted screening. Like now, that family would need a healthcare provider mm, mm. to sit down with them and explore. And focus, yeah. uh, do we have um, do we have room to try and now do early detection yeah. in this in this family? Yeah. And similar other families across the country that have been check that model. Yeah. We you. can do public cleaning if you put it together. Even in, in our government hospitals, if people are trained under good referral system. So that if you pick something that's suspicious, it gets up the line smoothly. Right. Well, thank you so much. This is, a, this is not a topic we can exhaust, of course, in one uh, show. So I'm looking forward to having you Absolutely. and others, of course, in subsequent yeah. shows. But thank you so much. Dr. James Dikal is a member of parliament for SEME, also sits in the health uh, committee. And uh, Dr. Alex Muturi, a surgeon. Of course, I did not mention, sorry about that. That is the National Trustee Kenya Medical Practitioners and Dentist Union. Thank you all for making time for us. Keep texting us, double two, four, double two. On Twitter, use the hashtag Newsnight. We are back after this break.